Hello, everybody. Welcome to my podcast. I'm Becky, and I can be found as Becky Burns Gibson on Pinterest, Instagram, and Ravelry. Today, we're going to be putting together the star quilt block. So this is what the star quilt block looks like. So we're going to be making 16, 16 of each one of these squares. And to do that, we're going to need eight five inch squares of the first color and eight five inch squares of the second color. Okay, I have selected um, coordinating fabrics to make my uh, quilt block. This one was from the Summers in the Cotswolds by Jay Masinski. And I purchased it at the Dancing Bobbin in Spring Hill. And this one I purchased at um, the Quilting Square in Franklin. So the first thing that I did was iron these to get the creases out. And now I'm going to lie them right sides together with the salvaged edges also together. And your fat quarters are not always going to be, uh, they're not always going to be the same size and they're not always going to be cut square. So you're going to have to do that yourself. I have my quilt ruler. And I'm going to line it up so that I know that I'm in a, at a right angle. A right angle here. And I'm going to cut my selvages. Always cut with your blade touching your ruler. Not this side because you won't get an accurate cut with if you cut with this side close to the ruler. So with your blade close to the ruler, cut off your selvages, and then square up the rest of your fabric using your ruler to make a right angle. As you see, these are not the same size. But we're going to remedy that. Okay, now my two fat quarters are the same size. I'm going to use my quilting ruler and I'm going to line up the five inches with the edge of my fabric. Mm. If you don't have a quilting ruler, and if you don't have a rotary cutter, this can be a little bit more difficult and time consuming. But the ruler and the rotary cutter make it fast work.
Okay, now I have 12 pairs of five inch squares. but I only need eight. I need eight pairs for 16 total squares. So I'm going to set aside four of the pairs. And I'm going to draw a line from one corner to another. This is so when I sew the, um, the one fourth of an inch seam allowance on either side, on either side of the line, I do it straight. And you may have one of those fancy sewing machines that has a, li a, a light that shines a straight line for you to assist you in sewing straight but I do not have that. So I just draw a line to enable myself to sew straight. Okay, so when I get to the sewing machine, I will sew at one fourth of an inch seam allowance from this line on this side, and then I will sew one fourth of an inch seam allowance on this side of the line. And I'll meet you at the sewing machine. Okay, I'm at the sewing machine and uh, I'm wearing my Fonz and Porter gloves, which help me to grip the fabric as I'm sewing it. I'm also going to use my stiletto. Um, I use this to keep my fingers out from under the sewing machine needle, so I use this for safety. It has a rubber piece on the end, and it has a curved, um, another end that's curved and pointy. Um, I purchased this at uh, the Bernina store called Sewing, Mas Sewing Machine Station in Brentwood. I'm also using a quarter of an inch um, piecing foot uh, that came with my sewing machine. If you don't have one, that's okay. You can use your standard sewing machine foot. The main thing is that you have a consistent 
one fourth of an inch seam allowance uh, throughout your your entire quilt top. And I'm going to be chain quilting these because it's most time efficient. I'm going to set my stitch length to 1.8. The uh, default stitch length is 2.5 on my machine. I'm going to change it to 1.8. This will keep the uh, stitches together uh, more effectively. Okay, so I have uh, I have sewn at one fourth inch seam allowance at one side of the line that I drew. Now I'm going to turn these around and I'm going to sew on the other side of the line at four, one fourth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now I'll meet you back at the cutting table. Okay, so now I'm going to snip the threads from in between my pieces. Okay, and I'm going to use my quilting ruler and my rotary cutter. And I'm gonna cut right down the line that I drew earlier. And you see I have made my quilt piece. I have made a pair of them. So I'm going to uh, continue to cut out, cut down the line of all my pieces, and then I'm going to take it to the ironing board, and I'm going to iron the seam allowances open, and I'll meet you back here at the cutting board. Okay, so I have gone to the ironing board, and I have ironed the... Uh, seam allowances down on either side and I'm going to um, place my quilt pieces in the pattern And there are two ways that you can do the center. You can lay out your pieces so that it creates a square in the middle. 
and that's pretty. Or you can lay out your pieces. so that it creates this design. And I think that's what we're going to do today. Oh, I have this one wrong. Let me turn that around. There we go, that's right. Okay, so we need to sew this all together and we're going to do that uh, in steps. So first we're going to sew this side together and this side together. So we're going to fold our pieces over and we're going to go ahead and pin them and pin them on the side that you're going to be sewing on. This way, when you get to your sewing machine, you won't forget which side you need to be sewing together. I do the same thing on this side. So when I get to the sewing machine, I'm going to chain sew them together so that they'll be in the same order. So I'm going to lay these out in order, chain piece them together in order, and then when I get back to my table, they'll be easy to assemble again. Okay, again I have my stitch length set at 1.8. And I'm going to sew my uh, pieces at one fourth of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to remove my pins. I'm going to clip, and as I clip these uh, threads in between, I'm going to go ahead and lay out in order.
This way you don't have to struggle trying to put together the pattern again. Okay, so now I need to sew this side to this side. So I'm going to fold this over. Pin it on the side that I'm going to be sewing on. And I'll meet you at the sewing machine. Okay, I have snipped my threads in between my pieces. And I've removed my pins. And I have gone to the ironing board. And I have ironed open the seam allowances. So now I'm going to lay this out in pattern. Okay, that looks great. Now I'm going to sew this piece to this piece. And I'm going to sew this piece to this piece. And I'm going to be careful the way that I um, pin together the seams. I want the seams to touch each other. On all three of the same points. And if there's a little bit of a gap, you can stretch it out when you're at the sewing machine. But the main thing is that you want these seams to line up exactly. See, there's a little bit of a gap there, but I can stretch that out at the sewing machine. If you maintain a consistent one-fourth of an inch seam allowance, everything should line up perfectly. Okay, so I have that pinned, and I'm going to pin this one. Make sure my seams are lined up. There's a little gap in that one I'm going to have to stretch out at the sewing machine. This one's perfect.
Okay, now the last sewing step that I have left is to sew these two big pieces together. So again, we are going to pin with our seams touching. technical difficulties. Okay, now I'm going to take this to the iron board and iron all of these seams open. Okay, we have completed our quilt block and we have given it a good press at the ironing board. As you can see, our points are all sharp and crisp and touching because we, uh, we lined up our seams before we sewed them together. Well, thank you so much for joining me again. Again, the um, Fat Quarter Bundle that I used was Summer in the Cotswolds by Jay Masinski. 
I hope you have enjoyed seeing me uh, sew the star quilt block and give it a try. I know you can do it. If you like what you've seen, click the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. And until next time, bye-bye.